This is a D42 that I did some work to. Uh, that kind of arms, doesn't it? Well, what I do to this? I did a popsicle brace on it. It has the HD style bracing where the scallop starts, you know, a little bit away from the X. Smoothed that out, made it more like a, a GE, an authentic, a pre-war. Did the back braces, took them down, did a neck reset on it. It had almost no saddle, and it came in. I uh, did a neck reset, slotted the bridge, put non-slotted ebony pins in it. Um, that's all, you know, not a whole lot of work. They only wanted some more base. And he wanted me to compare it to the uh, 37. D28 authentic and I'm gonna do that but I'll do that at the end of the video um, to me I think this guitar is more comparable to the uh, 41 authentic and the reason is they got the same size neck they have the X bracing is the same distance from the sound hole um, those are the two main things so the smaller neck and then the the uh, more rear shifted X bracing and I think this is more comparable to the 41 we're going to compare it to the 37 too, just so you can see what it sounds like against, you know, the standard. But that, that's a little bit of an apples and oranges um, comparison, whereas the 41 is a little bit more comparable. Now, of course, the top woods are different, you know, the back and the sides are different and all that kind of thing. But but I do think that the 41 and this one are the, the guitars that really ought to be compared. Anyway, I'm going to play it a little bit, um, do the comparisons, um, talk about it, play it. The usual thing. It's eight o'clock at night. I'm really tired. I've then been working all day long, and I'm leaving in the morning to take a vacation. So I've been really hustling to get stuff done. So let's see how this guitar sounds. <laughs>
Well, here's what I think about this guitar. Um, I think it's a really well-balanced guitar. It's got a lot of punch to it, uh, a lot of mid-range punch to it. The bass is fine. It's got a good bass, and it's got a good um, snap to the bass. So the bass is not mushy. It's, uh, when I say snap to it, what I hear is a treble on top of the bass. I hear a crisp, punchy bass, as opposed to a bass that's just bassy and dull and doesn't have any, any snap to it. Um, I don't like that. I can't stand dull guitars. Maybe some people call them drag sound. I don't know. But I, I don't like dull guitars. I like guitars with some sparkle and some snap to them. And, uh, man, this is good, you know. I've always thought that the 42s or the 40s and up with the Pearl, I always think they're just a little bit snappier and brighter. And... You know, you'd have to do an A-B test on one. I mean, you'd have to take a, a, a D-28 and ride it out and put Pearl in there to see. But I know other people have commented on that, too. And I know people that have done that and ride it out and inlaid the Pearl. And they thought, man, this sounds a little bit snappier. And I just wonder if the shell doesn't transmit just a little bit more Christmas, you know, rather than having a plastic binding right there that uh, absorbs the you know, snap. I don't know, it's a small difference, but I it just, I'd have played a lot of 40s over the years, and especially the 41s and 42s. They always seem to me to have just a little bit of extra clarity snap punch to them, just a little. This is a good guitar, you know? I mean, the neck is really nice. It's a nice taper. Um, it's got the white binding on it, which, you know, I really like white binding. Um, I just I like the way it feels in my hand. I like to look down, see the binding. Uh, the pearl is not, you know, really overdone on these. Like a 45 is a little bit too much for me, but a 42 is is about right. I like 42s a lot. It's got the inlay on the bridge, which is kind of a cool touch. Yeah, you know, Indian rosewood, the D28, HD28, fancy inlay in it. I like it. Uh, the mid-range is really good, you know. I had a punchy mid-range. The action's about 93 thousandths of an inch right now. And very comfortable to play. The neck's nearly flat. The nut's perfect. Good guitar. I can pull that off as tired as I am. Um, it says a lot about the playability of it. So. D42. It's going to go in the box in the morning. Get shipped back home. Good guitar.
37, authentic. You know, I've been over this guitar so many times, but you know, once again, sitting here in the hand and everything, um, it's just, it's a piano, you know, it's just this rich, 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 lush sound. Uh, maybe a little too much so sometimes. <laughs> it sounds great, you know, by itself. I mean, yeah, it sounds great by itself, and it would be good as a rhythm instrument and in band, but I don't think it has the cut and the, um, the sonic narrowness that some of the other guitars do. Sometimes a guitar that has a, uh, you know, that owns its little set of frequencies and fits into a band better. You know, you're, you, people are going to be cut. But if you have a, a wide spectrum of sound, that wide spectrum isn't what cuts. What cuts is, a, is whatever fits the niche that's missing. So you've got a band and you've got a bass and a mandolin and a fiddle and a banjo and you got to listen for that niche of sound that's missing, and that's where you want your guitar to be. And to me, the more focused, nasally, punchy guitars will generally fit that niche better. This guitar would be good for a lot of things. <laughs> it'd be great a rhythm instrument, and you know, it'd be fine as a cut as a lead. But um, I do think sometimes that lushness can get in the way. But man, you know, this is a great guitar. I mean, gosh, I'm just so happy to see Martin making guitars like this. This and the 41 and, um, you know, even the D42, uh, the, the modern guitars that I do a little bit of work on, those are all still just great guitars, you know. So, all right, good night. <laughs>